Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, where our faith grows stronger, and where we learn how to be an overcomer. Hallelujah. There's so much darkness and depression and confusion in the world. But the Lord said, uh, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. Hallelujah. And then he, he's teaching us how to do what he did by his spirit that he has given us and by his word. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with. Come on into the classroom. Let's receive uh, just what we should get today. Father, all of us agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing and, and hearts that can understand it and how to apply these things to get the, the results you want us to see and experience. We say get glory to yourself in all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look please in 1 John 5 again, scripture we've been looking at all week, talking about faith that overcomes, overcoming faith. In the fifth chapter, first verse, first John says, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Down in verse four, it says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the son of God. Notice he emphasizes this overcoming repeatedly. He uses the word over and over and, and again. Whatever is born of God, what? Overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? Was it necessary for him to say it three times in a row like that? Must have been, but not just for the information to be there, it's emphasis. Why? God wants you and I to overcome. He wants us to know that's who we are. That's what we are. That's what we do. We are not the conquered ones. We are not the subdued, the oppressed, the defeated, the failed. We are overcomers. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the victorious ones. Yes. Oh, somebody say, I'm born of God, I'm born of God. And, I'm an and I'm an overcomer. I overcome the world, I overcome the world. With, my faith with my faith in God. In God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Makes you feel better immediately just saying that. Yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, we, we talked about this first part of the week that the just shall live by faith, the just shall walk by faith, you overcome the world by faith. How do you do that? Every day you're dealing with the world, the ungodly, unbelieving world. You're dealing with the wrong and bad spirits that have infiltrated the ungodly world way of thinking and doing and living. It's all around you. How do you not only survive, but thrive and be victorious in such an environment, in such a setting? We, we don't know it because this is, all, we were born into this, uh, you know, in our human form. And, and even since we've been born again, we're still in the same earth, on the same earth, in the same world. This is all we've known thus far. But this is dark. It's full of death. It's full of the curse and evil. Um, 
And, and once we get out of here, we're going to be amazed by what it's like to live in light with no death and no curse and no temptation. <laughs> Woo. It's going to be wonderful. But until then, we have a job to do. We have, we're not just here to bide time. We're put here to accomplish something. The Lord is building his church. And you and I are supposed to be a part of it. And so we're going to have to push past this stuff, rise above this stuff, overcome this stuff. What stuff? This ungodly world, this death, this curse, this pressure, this deception and lies and temptation, like we've said. You've got to overcome it every day. How do you do that? We know it's with your faith, but exactly what does that look like and sound like? Well, it's a choice. Every day you wake up and feelings will come. In order to be an overcomer, you cannot be feeling-centric. Do you know what I mean by that? You cannot be feeling-governed. Because feelings are fickle. Feelings can be and are influenced by all sorts of things. Feelings can be influenced by the enemy himself, by his cohorts, by his workers, by people, other people that are yielding to him, motivating them to say something that just bothers you and hurts your feelings. And if you let it, you can just, you know, uh, fixate on that and go into a depression, go into a slump over what somebody said or did. Well, that was a wrong choice. And that's not how you overcome. When that hits you, when you felt those terrible feelings, when you heard those terrible things, you could have gone another direction. Hmm? You could have chosen to say, well, just because they said it doesn't make it true. <laughs> right? And even if part of it was true, with God's help, I can change today. Right? And not be this negative, hopeless victim feeling ruled uh, human being acting like somebody that's not even saved no you've been born of God you're different you are to overcome and that's a big part of your and my witness is other people watching us overcome right watching us getting hit with something that would take out most folks and we go what what? <laughs> Devil, you think you could take me out with that? No. And you start talking faith because you choose. Oh, somebody say choose. You, cho you choose to believe what God said. No, you say, no, no. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I can do this. I can have this. I can overcome this bad thing and have this good thing. I can. It's it's all about making the right choice every day, every night. Because things are coming up. Things will be coming up. Things will be coming up. And at every juncture, you've got to make the right choice. A choice to believe, a choice to trust God, is a choice to overcome. Amen. Come on, can you see that? A choice to fear, a choice to, to give up is a choice to be defeated, a choice to be overcome, like most of the world is. Go with me to Romans 10, please. Romans 10. And see something that is, it's how the, the, the life of the believer starts, and it's how the life of the believer functions and operates throughout your whole life. Romans 10 Verse 9 and 10, he talked about if you'll confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, 
you'll be saved. And verse 11, whoever that believes on him will not be ashamed. Verse 13, whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then he says, how will they call on him in whom they've not believed? How will they believe in him whom they've not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach or proclaim the gospel of peace that bring glad tidings of good things. That's a definition of gospel. What is the gospel? Glad tidings of good things is another way of saying the gospel. Uh, you'll hear sometimes people say, well, the gospel is the good news. We use the term news today. But there's another word the Holy Spirit has used that I want us to emphasize and focus on today. It's in these next couple of verses. But notice that it's good tidings, right? Not bad tidings, good tidings. The gospel is good news, good tidings. And he says, they've not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? That's the word I wanted to, to emphasize, report the word report, because this, when he says Isaiah said this, he's quoting from Scripture. And you'll find this also in the book of John. So the, there's several times in the word this phrase is, is shown, is, it comes out, who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? Um, hold your place here and go to Isaiah. In uh, the 53rd chapter, because he said Isaiah said this, and he did. So let's just look at it. Isaiah 53 is how it, it starts out. It's how it begins. What does it say? Who has believed our report? That's a question. It's followed by another question. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now see here, uh, the Spirit of God through Paul only quoted half of that. But that's all he was emphasizing right then. Who has believed our report? What's the rest of the question? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Come on, say that out loud with me. Who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? And, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? What, what does that mean? The arm of the Lord represents the power of God. And you'll find that that is symbolized and described by degrees in different scriptures. Uh, there are a number of scriptures that talk about the hand of God. And then there are also scriptures that talk about the finger of God. Well, those are all... Uh, relative degrees of the manifestation of the power of God. Finger power is one degree of power. Hand power, that's another degree. Can you see that? And arm power, whew, we're talking, because we're talking finger of God. What can God do with his finger? Mm. What can God do with his hand? What can God do when he pushes up his sleeve <laughs> and flexes his arm? Oh, well, we're not left to just guess about all of this. Um, Jesus said when the religious leaders accused him of casting out devils by the prince of devils, Beelzebub, now these are supposed to be, these are the religious leaders of the people. And this is how they talk and think. It's no wonder the people were like sheep without a shepherd. Right? When the leaders believe in this kind of junk. And he said, among other things, he said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God. <laughs> I won't go into the rest of it, but just, just that phrase. What's he saying? Friends, 
When the Holy Spirit manifests against powers of darkness, there is never a wrestling struggle. <laughs> never. Never. Is the, is the powers of darkness say, we're not going. You can't make us go. And they get into a wrestling match. Never. Never. Picture what was happening. Jesus would tell these wrong spirits, shut up and come out of them. And the Holy Spirit would go. <laughs> and they have to come out. They're gone. Somebody say finger, 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 finger of God. There, there are times like with Elijah said the hand of the Lord came on him and he outran the king's horses Hallelujah. and chariots. You talk about booster power. <laughs> huh? <laughs> He's running along. I mean, normally human beings cannot outrun fast horses, yeah. right? Yeah. Not even a race. But the Lord's hand came on him and whoo, he, he was supercharged. And I, wouldn't, I, I'd like to see that. Wouldn't you like to see? Maybe we can look back and see that later on and see, you know, the boost and the power that came on Elijah as he took off and outran those horses and chariots across the plain. And you know, a similar thing happened with, um, um, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, the man that pushed down the, the columns with the Philistines and all that. Solomon. Huh? Solomon. Samson. Samson. See, you were stuck as I was. <laughs> Samson. Samson. I mean, uh, people might imagine that Samson was this huge hulk of a man, but that'd be adding to the scriptures. We don't know that he was that much bigger than any average sized man. That's not, you could have been 10 foot tall and not do the stuff that he did. It wasn't just about physical might, but the Bible would say the spirit of the Lord would come on him. And oh, brother, <laughs> I mean, stuff got broken, stuff got crushed, stuff got moved. It was a power beyond the natural. And these terms, finger of the Lord, hand of the Lord, arm of the Lord, uh, portray this. And so he's asking a question. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Another way of saying that, to whom is the power of God manifested? Do we want to see the power of God manifested in our lives? It's key to our victory. Who's going to see this? The answer to the question is the same one. What do you mean? Look back to the first part of the question. What is it? Who has believed our report? Then there's not the answer, but there's another question. And to whom? The implication is the same one. To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who is the power of God going to be revealed to? The one that believes the report. Oh, come on, can you see that? The one that believes the report. Now see, go back to uh, Romans 10 now. He's quoting that. And you'll find this quoted in other places. This is a, a repeated phrase. Who has believed our report? Now here, he's calling the gospel the report. Can you see that? Back up. Let's look at it again. Verse 15. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach what? The gospel. The gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed what? The gospel. For Isaiah says, who has believed our report? The report refers directly to the gospel. The report. And you'll see that he goes on to say, So then faith cometh by hearing. Now here's something that I, I mentioned at last class and we're finally getting to it. This is the word hearing is the same word for as report. <laughs> and then he says it again, and hearing by the word of God. 
Young's literal translation, which I, I really like, um, it says it like this, verse 16, they were not all obedient to the good tidings. This is Romans 10, 16, Young's literal translation. For Isaiah said, Lord, who did give credence to our report? So then the faith is by a report and the report through a saying of God. That is a technically precise translation. If you look up the words, it's the same Greek word. Here, the translators made it hearing, and yet it's the word for report. Now, that doesn't mean to say hearing is wrong, because it is also translated other places hearing, but it's translated interchangeably, hearing or report. Well, a report is something you hear. But this is something I believe we should focus on. And we're just getting into it right now, and this is the end of this week, but I'm expecting we're going to just camp on this in next week and in time to come. What do you mean? Who has believed God's report? Huh? And faith comes by hearing that report. By that, it comes by the report, is the accurate way to say it. And the report comes through what God has said. And can you see that we're, we're still talking about this choice every day? You get a bunch of unexpected bills. <laughs> and then you hear some bad news on the, on the TV or on your iPod or iPad or whatever it is and, and you, or your phone. And, 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 you, and, and then you hear some bad news about at work. And, and so you got a bad report going here. And you can just immerse yourself in that and listen to that and look at that and think that and talk that and you will not overcome. You will be overcome. Or you could say, isn't there another report? <laughs> I don't like these reports that I'm hearing. <laughs> Don't we have another report? Yes. <laughs> Does God have a report? Yes. Does, did God say anything about this? Because if he did, that's what I want to know. Yeah. Right? Because this stuff, I mean, all these sources are even dubious. Yeah. Huh? I mean, come on, child of God, have you learned do not believe everything you hear? Amen. Huh? Yeah. On the news? On media, even good friends, even, even though they mean well, where'd they get their information? Right? Or they could be, they could not be trying to deceive you, they could just be wrong. But what you gotta watch is by hearing the bad report and going, oh, that's it. I guess we're done. No, 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 no. You wanna say, isn't there another report? Huh? What, what did the Lord say? What's his report? You know, we, we sing a song sometimes, and y'all are probably thinking about it right now. And, and we, the little ones sing it too. Whose report will you believe? Huh? Whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Huh? His report says, I'm healed. Hallelujah, his report, <laughs> right? Yes. That is not just a nice little kitty song. That is how you're supposed to live. Day in, day out. Don't just accept the negative report, the report of defeat, the report of failure. Never accept it. I mean, a lot of people when it comes to physical things, they'll say, I, know, I want another opinion. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I want to... I want another opinion. I want another. They want another report. Right? right. right? Well, we should always be thinking, hold on now. I, I hear what they said, but what has, what has God said about this? What is he saying to me about this? Because if I want to see the power of God, it's connected with me believing his report. 
Right? I got, I got to find out what he said. I got to believe what he said. I got to receive and embrace what he said. Trust what he said. Act on what he said. And that is the person who will experience the arm of the Lord. Amen. The power of the Lord manifested in their lives. Not to person that believes the bad report, but to person that believes the good report, the gospel. Come on, can you see this? The good news. Hallelujah. And so you want to make it every day even more important than your coffee or whatever. What? Before you hear a bunch of bad news, you want to hear the good news. Get that good report. Come in it. What, what did he say? What did he say? He said, you're more than a conqueror. He said, all your needs are met. He said, with long life, he'll satisfy you. Come on, can you see this? I got a report. I got a good report. Let that be more important to you than anything else. Let it overshadow everything else that comes against you. And our time's up again. Say it out loud. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome this world by faith, I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's it for today. Come back tomorrow. There's a whole lot more to see. See you soon here in Faith School. I've sure enjoyed being with you again this week here in Faith School. Every Friday, I like to release faith with our partners. I know many of you are partners with the ministry. The scripture said in Philippians that if you're a partner, you are a partaker of the grace that is on us. We're talking about not listening to bad reports. And you can't just focus on that. God has a right and access into your life when you have put him first financially and you're doing things for his ministries. So we have a right to believe with you that just like it said there that he... God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory like you're helping our needs to be supplied. Father, I release faith over all of our partners. I speak against the work of the enemy and command it to stop and to cease from stealing, killing, and destroying in their finances and material realm. And I agree with them and release faith with them for abundance. I claim and call abundance to come into them a bountiful harvest off of every good seed they've sown coming into them to meet their needs abundantly in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The good report is He meets all your needs. Believe that more than anything else. We'll see you soon back here in Faith School. We're going from grace to grace, faith to faith, glory to glory. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.